spiritual celebration of the All Souls Day Mass. Spirit. As we approach the altar, the Lord will take a moment, a moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. You were sent to heal the contract. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him a paw up to benefit us all. We may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Jesus Christ? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted, or lacking foods, food or clothes, or being threatened, or even attacked, 
These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. For a response or a song, I'll invite Sylvia to sing our song for us. to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we gather on this Feast of All Souls, it's an important feast for us to think about as we pray this day. Certainly, you'll notice something's a little different. I'm wearing black vestments, and that's a kind of very odd thing. Um, we acknowledge very much that morning is hard, and morning can be kind of dark. And the wonderful thing about this vestment is it's, of course, lined with gold and the gold pattern to remind us that from the morning comes eternal life, which is the most precious thing we could have is gold. But we've come here to pray. And in the Catechism, it tells us that all who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of eternal salvation. But after death, they must undergo a purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the kingdom of heaven. It also says, from the beginning of the church, we've honored the memory of the dead and offered intercessory prayer for them, above all the Eucharistic prayer, so that, thus purified, they may attain the beatific vision of God in heaven. So let us never hesitate to help those who've died and to offer prayers for them. It's in 609. So what does this mean? Well, sometimes it's kind of difficult for us to understand it as we think about it. But you know, as I was thinking about the little children at St. Cornelius who are with us today, how do we explain purgatory? How do we explain that time period where we have to uh, get purified? And I guess one of the greatest examples I would like to use is as a child, it's kind of like taking a shower. We gotta get all the dirt off. Now, when I was a little boy, of course I had four brothers, so we would get quite dirty. And my mother would always make sure we get a bath before we went to bed, because the mud in the sheets was not very good, right? And dirt in the sheets. So she wanted to clean us up. And mom was never happy with dirty sheets. But there's something about that for us, if we think about it. When people die, they need to be cleansed before they can get into heaven. Because there's no place for dirt in heaven. There's no place for mud in heaven. There's no place for those troubles. And as an adult, I look at it a little differently. I know very deeply that there's no room for heaven, in heaven, for my sorrows. There's no room in heaven for hatred. There's no room in heaven for disappointments. There's no room in heaven for difficulties. That's the important thing. We need to be forgiven and to purify in love of God. And only if only a purified soul can enter heaven. And we know some people may not have been ready when they've died. So we pray for them to be free from whatever is blocking them from coming into heaven. We have all been at a funeral mass and we all feel the pain and the loss and the sadness and the grief. We pray today for all those who are missing a loved one, especially. In the Book of Wisdom it says, The souls of the just are in the hands of God. No torment shall touch them. They seem in a view of the foolish to have died. And their passing away was thought an affliction. And they're going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. And for us, that's important. It's important for us as we listen to the reading, certainly in the first reading that Rowan wrote from St. Paul. He tells us, for I am certain 
that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And how important that is for us. And of course, Ivana, she reminded us we should be certain, certain, that Jesus died to save us. And he wants us to be with him in heaven. These are great reminders to us. The gospel spoke about wheat remains only a single grain until it's put into the ground and dies. And I remember a, a story of a little boy and his teacher. And as he came to school, he said to his teacher, my sister has really died. They put her in the ground and they covered her up. And the teacher, of course, put her arms around the little boy and took him to the box at the window. There, the class had planted seeds earlier. And using her fingers, she dug into the ground and she moved the ground away and found one of the seeds. Pointing to the green sprout emerging from the seed, she said, See her, the seed is not dying. It is only changing its way of living. God never intended us to stay a seed. He intends it to become a beautiful flower. And it's the same with your sister. She is now changing, and she will be living forever in heaven. God made her for something much more wonderful than just to see. Death is our birthday into eternal life. And it's important for us to kind of recognize that, that we have a birthday when we're born into physical life, but we also are going to go on to eternal life. And there's a cute little story about a little girl who um, was walking along a country road with her father and they were holding hands. And as she looked up into the star-studded sky, her eyes were filled with wonder. Turning to her father, she said, Daddy, if that's the bottom side of heaven and it's so beautiful, what do you think the top side of heaven will be like? And for us, it's a good reminder of the wonderful gift of heaven. You see, in heaven there'll be no more sorrow, no more weeping, no more pain, no more illness, no more sickness. There we'll be able to be purely of love. All of our human struggles will be left behind. All of our human difficulties will be left behind. We will no longer worry about anything. We'll be full with, filled with peace and love. So let us pray for those we love and who loved us. But let's also pray for all the souls who need our help to get ready to enter the kingdom of heaven. I would like to now ask Cassandra if she'd come forward and help us with the prayers of faith. God has called all of us to meet with him one day in heaven. Let us pray that we may be ready when the Lord comes to welcome us. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For an appreciation of the contributions of all Christians in building up the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders called to govern with wisdom, mercy, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer because of war and unrest throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, pri for prisoners, the poor, the forgotten, the unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn and for an end to abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of gracious, hopeful waiting, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying of our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased of our community, especially those whose names are being offered up today from the staff and students of Robert F. Hall Catholic Secondary School and St. Cornelius Elementary School, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we lament the departure of our loved ones from this life, grant, O Lord, that we remember them and are certainly to follow them. Eternal rest grant upon them, O Lord, 
and let their temperature light shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, the blood of Christ, in the blood of Christ, the sins of the faithful departed servants. For you purify increasingly by your merciful forgiveness those who once cleansed in the water of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of the blessed resurrection is gone, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, with the host of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In 
a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Offer each other some sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servants, who we listed so lovingly, that cleansed by the Paschal Mysteries, they may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon to our sins, and to the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Almighty Father, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And a special thank you to uh, Ronan, uh, Roman and uh, Evan, Anne, Anna, and Cassandra, who uh, did our readings. Thank you to Patrick, who is our chaplain, who's been filming. And of course, Sylvia and a few other girls are up there who are uh, singing for our Mass. So I'm very grateful for all of you here. Have a blessed and glorious uh, time today. And be full of hope, because that's our great mission, is to be a people of hope in the resurrection. So we will live forever with the Lord. Thank you, Father. Go in the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.